Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to talk to you about the latest batch of news for STO on both PC and console. As always, chapters are listed down below if you want to skip ahead to any specific topic. And for the first topic, I want to go through and take a look at all of the sales currently going on over on console. So the way that they have this all written up can be a bit confusing, so I have moved it all over to a notepad to try and simplify it. So from February 22nd through the 27th on console, there is 35% off all Klingon related items in the C store, 25% off all C store ships, 20% off all tier 6X and fleet ship module type items, 25% off all slots and services, 25% off all uniforms, 25% off all personnel, and 25% off on all of the starter packs. So if you're looking to pick any of those items up, that sale will be running through February 27th. And there is an extended sale running on console also from February 22nd through March 8th for 20% off all of your Zen packages. So if you're looking to pick up any of the things on sale or you're wanting to get some Zen prepared for the upcoming 13th bundle or the expected legendary bundle that we should be getting in the next month or so, now would be a good time to pick that Zen up because you don't know when the next Zen sale will be. And heading over to the PC side of things, the first bit of news here is that we have an upgrade event going on. This started a couple days ago and will be running through February 27th. So if you have anything that you need to upgrade, now would be a very good time to go through and take advantage of this event to get those upgrades done a bit cheaper. If you need some advice on getting the most out of your upgrades, I have a video going over that topic from a year or so back, and I'll have that linked down below if you want to check it out. And the next bit of news for those of us on PC is a flash sale for Master Keys that is going to be running through February 27th. This is a 25% sale on Master Keys and a return of the 20 key ring pack that has the ultimate tech upgrade attached to it. And if you're looking to get keys, if you're already planning on it, this is a good sale. This is about as good of a discount as we normally get. However, if you were not already planning on getting keys, I would probably hold off if you can. The reason that they're doing this sale is to drain, to, to try and drain Zen from our accounts because there's gonna be a bunch of new things released over the next couple of months. So if we look at the ship release patterns, which Fleffel has broken down very well, Sometime in March, there's going to be a new promo ship, which is going to be very expensive Zen-wise to try and obtain. And based on the recent statements from 10 Forward, where they want to focus on Fed ships, that means it's likely one of the Fed ships from one of the recent shows. And that really leaves just a couple of possibilities. The Protostar, which I'm going to say is unlikely, given that they are still apparently having issues getting everything negotiated with Nickelodeon. The Titan is most certainly going to be a promo ship at some point. Uh, however, I don't think we're going to get it this early because season three of Picard is still airing. I do think that this will be a promo ship, but I think it's probably going to be one that we see around summer or fall. I just do not see us getting the, the, the Titan in the first half of the year here. And that really leaves the Texas from Lower Decks as the ship most likely to me to appear. The, we could also see maybe the Obina, which I think was like a, a, an Excelsior from Lower Decks. That could also be a good option. But I think to me, if they're wanting to go with something iconic from the recent shows, the Texas class just seems like the most likely ship to be the promo ship next month. Now, in addition to that, there's going to be a new MUDS bundle coming out sometime in March. So that's going to be something a bit expensive Zen-wise to obtain. And we already know that there is another legendary ship coming out probably sometime around April. And they teased this last year to most likely be a legendary Akira or a legendary Mogai. So, you know, going back to the key sale here, if you were already planning on getting keys, you know, go for it. It's a good sale. But if you weren't planning on getting keys already, this sale is just trying to get you to spend your in-game resources so that when these other things come out, you have to put more money into the game. So if you want the keys, this is a really good sale. But if you don't need the keys, 
might be worth holding on for the next couple of weeks just to see what all comes into the game. And next up, I want to go through and take a look at some of the PC patch notes from this week. The first thing here is that the memorial plaque was updated to include Gerald Fried. If you're not familiar with his work, he was involved with some of the music on the original series. And I'll include a link to the AV Club post going over his death, where they also link to some of his work. And in the first video that they have there, if you go to about two minutes and you play that, you'll very quickly recognize some of his work there. The, the fight music, even if you're not someone that likes TOS, you will recognize it quite quickly because it's very, very iconic for the Star Trek franchise. The Omega Stabilization event was extended to the 27th. So if you were playing earlier this week before the patch and you were trying to use the Omega event to get your daily progress for the anniversary. Q was handing out the mission, but he wasn't giving the locations for where you needed to go scan the Omega little particles. And they fixed that with this patch and have extended the anniversary event to give you some time to go through and to get the progress that you missed out on. The Mars pilot escort can now use the pilot modification set. So if you have some of those other pilot ships. It's good to see that they're expanding the ships that can use those consoles. The Fakiri Burjai can now use the phase shift generator console. The Hydra strike group command authority starship trait was causing people to be trapped in red alert under certain conditions, most notably if used with the ultimate swarm console on. And this patch has fixed that. So you should no longer get trapped in a permanent red alert by having this starship trait on with certain abilities on your build. The console from the Eagle has had a few fixes go out for it, and I'll talk about those more here in a minute. The cultural conquest trait from the World Razor was not being triggered by all firing modes, and they have went in and attempted to address that. However, the testing that I did on the stream Thursday after the patch showed that it was still not being triggered by mine abilities. So there's still some fixes that need to go out for that trait. The legendary sovereign has had its turn rate corrected. So it is now the correct value of eight. And most of these other fixes are just visuals. And now let's take a look at the covert warhead module. So in the patch notes here, they fix the issue where it wasn't recognized that it was slotted on a pilot ship until it was removed and re-equipped. And they have also resolved an issue where when the console was slotted, it would sometimes cause the torpedo global cooldown to reach zero. And that resulted in some really fun footage. The Stow Better folks tried it out with a bunch of the quad Kelvin torpedoes while it was bugged. And with those Kelvin Torps, or the Quad Kelvins, which are just reskins of the, the normal Kelvins, they're firing so fast that it looked like it was cannons and not torpedoes. So they have went through and fixed that because it was not intended for the Torps to fire quite that fast, but they still do fire quite fast after the patch. Now, if you are somebody that flies a torpedo build, the Covert Warhead module off of the Eagle is very, very likely to be something that you're going to want to pick up to replace the Pharaoh Fluid console. And I can go show those two in game here. So let me find Pharaoh Fluid. So the Pharaoh Fluid console has a reduction to your shared torpedo recharge time and then passives for hole capacity and power settings. The Covert Warhead module, on the other hand, in addition to also having the shared torpedo cooldown reduction, has a 28% Cat 1 projectile damage boost. So right off the bat, if you're flying a torpedo build, the Covert, covert Warhead module is going to give you the same shared cooldown reduction for your torpedoes, and even better if you're on a pilot ship, but instead of getting a hull capacity boost and some power that you don't really need, you're going to get a cat one projectile damage boost. So right there alone, if you're a, if you're someone flying a torp build, you want to drop Pharaoh fluid and pick up the covert warhead module. 
However, the Covert Warhead module does have one issue that they have so far not really addressed, and that is that the clicky on it is doing a ton of damage under certain conditions, especially if you're on a build with high aux power and or heavy EPG skill investment. So Game Freaks went through and did a test with this console at the start of an infected, I believe, and the, the numbers from it are crazy. Now, this, this was with quite a bit of debuff and control in the run, but in that environment, you can see that that's 110 million damage from a single console. So for reference, the Agony Redistributor was considered overpowered for doing about 40 to 50 million damage. And this destruct the, or the, this covert warhead module and specifically the destruction of enemy area defenses ability on it is doing two to three times that in the right environment. You're not always going to see these numbers from it. And it's not as easy to get these numbers from, from this console as it was with the agony redistributor, but you get the point that this clicky on this, this console is really, really quite potent. And I do expect that at some point in the future, they are going to tune it down. So for those of you that have been looking at the Eagle, just keep in mind that at some point, this, this console is probably going to get some sort of performance reduction to it because it's just too powerful. And if you want a visual of it, here is an infected run where I activated the console around the time I was going to the gateway. You see my DPS before it activates is 1.3 million. And once it goes off, it jumps up to 1.9. So right there, it did about 45 million damage in that specific run. So yeah, I, again, I, I just want to have that expectation out there for people that this thing probably is going to get tuned down in the future. I think the console is still good for the passives, but the, the, the clicky on it is just way too potent in its current form. And the last bit of news here for today is going to be some follow-up on the state of the, the lithium exchange. So as many of you know, back around December of 2022, the dilithium exchange backlog on PC was hitting around 11 and a half million Zen worth of dilithium in the backlog. And at the time, if you wanted to sell your dilithium for Zen, it was taking over a month for your order to go through. Now, since the mid to later parts of December, the Dilex has been rapidly declining. And in the past couple of days and weeks, it has really been dropping off, especially with the current Good Day to Die event, removing Defense of Starbase 1 Elite from the game for the next couple of weeks. So at the end of January, the Dilex was had dropped all the way down to 7 million dilithium or 7 million Zen worth of dilithium in the backlog. A week later, it was already down to under 6 million. And just uh, yesterday on February 24th, it had dropped under 4 million Zen worth of dilithium in the backlog. Now it has been about 21 hours since I put that tweet out. And in that time frame, in that 21 hours, the Dilex has already dropped another 460k. So if this trend continues and the bots do not resurge when Starbase 1 Elite is returned into the game here in the in a week or two, then we may honestly be looking at it becoming increasingly likely that the Dilex will go back under 500 dil per zen. If this trend continues, like we've been losing almost half a million in the backlog now for the past couple of days. And if that continues a week or two from now, the dil X could legitimately be back under 500 dil per zen on PC. So at that point, you know, there's probably gonna be some discussion about whether people wanna just sell their zen off that they have so that they can buy so, so that they can get the, the dilithium while the dilithium's got really high value and then convert that dill back to Zen. Once the, the dill rate 
you know, goes back down a little bit. But there's going to be a lot of discussion about playing the market and things like that. So hopefully this trend continues, but I think this is really good progress. And I think if Cryptic really cares about the Dilex, if they, if they actually care, this is the time while it's rapidly dropping like this to put in a dill draining event like a Phoenix pack event and or the vanity shield event to try and land a final blow to this dill X backlog. And I still think they could do things like adding in a T6 coupon into the Epic Phoenix store during Phoenix events as another way to really make the Phoenix events have a larger impact as a dill draining event. Um, you know, there's many different possibilities there, but regardless, I, I think if Cryptic wants this issue to be sorted, if they want this to be dealt with so that they stop hearing people complain about it, this would be the time, this, the next week or so to go in and put one of those events out to, to just really make this crash under 500 deal present. But that's going to be it for this video today. You guys let me know what you think. Let me know what your ideas are for, uh, you know, Dilithium Sinks, especially for something that they could add to Phoenix. I'm just curious to see what you guys think. But that's going to be it for today. Thank you again to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. And stop by in a couple hours because I will be doing a stream shortly after this news video goes live. See you guys around.